Hi, Ellen. Well, welcome to the virtual purple sofa. Oh, it's nice. Jack games. Um, wow. We yeah. couldn't get into the studio, folks, this week. No, no, no. It's like we're back in lockdown, but we're yeah. not. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Inst- we just we just couldn't. We do just that, couldn't so. get in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> we like the was out or something. There was no know. public health reason we couldn't get in the studio. We just. <laughs> couldn't it just <laughs> but, didn't <laughs> just couldn't. logistics Some lo- um, yeah. so this games for november 2022 mm-hmm. is brought to you mm-hmm. from uh, a, a wonderful zoom call um hello but don't worry about the marginally lower quality of the presentation of this video because we're going to make up it's for it still with very the high quality <laughs> No, Ellen. I, tr- I worked real hard. Don't try to sugarcoat it, Ellen. It looks like absolute garbage. It looks yeah. and sounds like garbage. <laughs> you should stop watching now. But we're hoping that the we're hoping that the interestingness of the games we're going to talk about that are coming out in November 2022 will make up for any shortfall in our admittedly awful production. <laughs> Coming to PC and mobile, this intriguing mystery game requires two players. Co-op point-and-click adventure The Past Within has you solve puzzles around Rusty Lake. What will you and your friends discover? So I was looking at some of the games coming out in November, yeah. and this was one that kind of went, hey, look at me, Ellen. I'm kind of intriguing. Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little mobile game. And yeah, usually, um, you know, there's a few good mobile games that I really like absolutely adore but I'm usually like yeah there's a lot of mobile games and it's very difficult to find something as intriguing as this oh my goodness what is this yeah and it's because it's sort of like it's the old-fashioned point and click adventure game but you have to play it with two players it's it's uh, sort of that that particular type of game where co-op is mandatory yeah um it's from the same creators as the cube collection uh, so that's the set of puzzle games I also looked up to see like what are the things that they'd made and like overwhelmingly positive reviews on these games from players and critics alike. Yeah, it's, so, it, look, it looks really, really cool. There, there aren't enough uh, solely co-op games, absolutely. Yeah. Like you're, it's real slim pickings. And, and co-op games are so fun. Um, yeah. And, you know, and, and, and they're great. And the things that you can do in a co-op game, in an exclusively co-op game, the kind of mechanics and puzzles that you can bring out of that format mm-hmm. really really fun and really really interesting just look at you know things like um a way out yeah uh, um also uh, as far as i can tell i'm not familiar with this developer's work but i think mm-hmm. all of their games are set in the same universe yeah. the rusty, rusty lake rusty lake yeah. universe which is a really really cool idea yeah i like that it's got its own like cinematic universe yeah i think it looks really cool it's a shame that it wasn't out in Halloween month, but yeah, because it, it does I have think, like a horror vibe, doesn't it? Yeah, but I do think that you know, it can be spooky season for as long as you want it. Doesn't exactly. have to stop. As doesn't long as there are horrors in your first. heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's actually another game coming up that was, you know, uh, clearly um, clearly meant to be out in October. In October, but they yeah. just missed yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, we'll get to it soon. But past within looks cool. The fastest hedgehog that we're aware of is back with a new adventure. Stranded on an ancient island fighting weird metallic looking monsters, Sonic has loads more platforming to do in Sonic Frontiers, which boasts the series' first open world. Gotta go fast! Yeah, you gotta. Uh, okay, so it's a Sonic game, it's open world. Mm-hmm. I've read mm-hmm. that they are sort of hoping that this game sets the template for Sonic games going forward in the same yeah. way that the Sonic Adventure games kind of set the template for the 3D, the, the yeah. Sonic early 3D era. Now, yeah. I I like the Sonic Adventure games, but I don't think that they set the greatest of templates mm. compared to, you know, compared to like when Mario went 3D, which is, you know, the ob- yeah. certainly was the obvious comparison yeah. at the time. This seems like a little bit of a curiosity. It's like, oh, will a Sonic open world game work? But they clearly have really, really high hopes for it. They want this to mm-hmm. basically be, this is what Sonic games are now. They, This is, you know, they. This so it's it. really quite important, I think, to the Sonic franchise that this one lands and, and does well, because otherwise they're going to have to do a little bit of reversing and U-turning, I think, to, uh, you know, to, to get Sonic games back to being something different. Yeah, um, and it's really difficult to U-turn as Sonic because he goes so fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it depends which game. Sometimes the controls yeah. are so iffy that all you can do is U-turn. <laughs> yeah. 
I uh, I had a lot of fun uh, playing Sonic Colors and a few. There's been a few of the 3D games that I have enjoyed, but yeah. also there have been some of the 3D games that I've been like, oh my gosh, this is too much. And I'm wondering. I'm really intrigued to see how Frontiers will land, whether it will be an absolute smash hit and be like, this is what Sonic should have been for ages, or yeah. whether it's gonna be just a little bit wobbly until they find their feet and get like that one that is oh my gosh amazing all i can tell from the trailers is that graphically i think it looks pretty neat um, yeah you know which is y- cool you get to fight a scary anime child yeah which, which is you i know, always appreciate i mean um yeah you don't get to do yeah, that in there's, enough games. there's some no uh there's some boss fights and bits so. where you go along collecting rings so like sort of get those bits ring collecting um, gameplay Interesting. Also, uh, there's a uh, free Monster Hunter DLC, which I think you'd be interested in, Luke. Thank you to Eurogamer for this information. Sonic Frontiers will have free Monster Hunter DLC a week what? after its release. What? Uh, what is it? It's the, it's will launch on 14th of November what and include it? two costumes it? for Sonic, Rathalos and Feline. Oh, okay. So it's Monster Hunter DLC in Sonic Frontiers. Yeah. Okay. I thought you. Oh my could, gosh! You can I dress Sonic you, up as a little monster hunter. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not. I'm not interested in, in that at all. I thought you were. Gonna, I, I thought it was going to be that you could have a little you Sonic. It was going to be the other way. Yeah. I thought Sonic could be your palico. Like a Sonic or your palico. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. In, um, in Monster Hunter. No. 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 Okay. Yes. It is quite cute. <laughs> it is quite. It looks a lot like this is the inevitable next Sonic game, like yeah. Sonic and the <laughs> dragon scale armor curse. You know, do another he one does, where he's he a knight. He looks a bit like a Dark a Souls knight. boss. He does, yeah. Um, I mean, good luck beating Sonic in Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's way faster than he's way, Yeah, he's way faster than, <laughs> than Yeah, yeah. My fingers are crossed, Ellen. Look at them. Oh, uh, we we have mine crossed as well. We're we rooting for you, Sonic. Good. Go, go on, get him. Sonic. Don't Gotta screw it up, you stupid hedgehog. <laughs> Take it out of your hide. Enjoy watching the football, but feel you could do a better job of guiding a team to victory? Well, always know you can try it out for yourself thanks to video games. This year, Football Manager 2023 arrives as another instalment in the series and is the perfect gift for any backseat manager you know. So, Luke, yeah. have you ever played any Football Manager? No, no. I've, I, have, I, I have not. I'm aware of its incredible reputation as yes. uh, you know a, as a management sim. So mm-hmm. I'm very glad that it continues to exist and and yeah. be updated. And it exists in a lot of different versions. So I'll just read out the, the different versions that are coming out. Oh god. Okay. Um, okay. So there's the Football Manager 2023 which is the default one that's on Mac and PC. Right. There's Football Manager 2023 console for PlayStation Xbox consoles. Um, it's also going to be part of Game Pass on Xbox. Mobile is available on uh, Android and iOS. And then Football Manager 2023 Touch is nice. on Nintendo Switch and Apple Arcade. Oh, so wow. if you have Apple Arcade, you'll get that. Yeah, you actually don't see a lot of Switch games that really make use of the touchscreen. Um, no, so yeah. So actually, yeah, so playing this on a, Switch yeah, with a touchscreen, touch that, that, that actually sounds pretty good. I have seen a few comments from people who are saying maybe it's time for a graphical overhaul because, right. uh, you know, a management sim doesn't have to look the prettiest, right? That's not where, the, where, where it stands or falls quality-wise. But... You know, this. I'm not sure it's the most apt comparison, but earlier, Mm -hmm. you know, a few months ago, we had F1 Manager um, uh, come out, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, You know, probably uh, in terms of like the management side of things, I'm sure Football Manager is a lot richer and has a lot more of that depth and history. Um, But I do think that F1 Manager has has sort of. Uh, kind of set the bar for for what sports management games can look like. Uh, well, maybe next year. Maybe Football Manager 2024 is the huge engine graphical overhaul uh, that maybe. completely breaks the series and everyone hates it. But yeah. <laughs> 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 um, I've also double checked, and uh, for fans who are watching, welcome to Wrexham. Oh yeah, Wrexham is in there. Um, and Good. Luke, have you watched Welcome to Wrexham? No, but I'm aware of the premise. You, right? You need to watch it because this this will be your Netflix F1 uh, bit thing that gets you into football. I think it would be great if something could. Like, boy, yeah, boy really would I be good. able to talk to a lot more people? Yeah. Uh, look, so. it, you know, it's it's lovely watching it and supporting an underdog as someone who is a Fulham fan. And as of recording, 
I cannot believe I'm saying this. Fulham are seventh in the Premier League. Oh, wow. uh, so I'm just I'm soaking that up right now and just enjoying that as yeah. someone who used to support them in Division Three. Even I know what um, that so means. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, like it, it you can literally watch the series and then play along as the manager and see if you do any better. Can than you beat Ryan Reynolds? Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhaney. You're a better man. You think you're a better yeah. manager than Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> well, they're not technically the the managers. No, but they no, do well, are a very good manager. You think you're a better manager no than Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> Get ready for every PlayStation owner to suddenly go around saying boy all the time as God of War Ragnarok comes to the PS4 and PS5. Taking place three years after the original game, Kratos and Atreus look for a means to stop Ragnarok while dealing with the consequences of their actions in the previous game. So no spoilers for the first game, but sure. ooh, things happened. <laughs> and I'm so excited to see where they go next. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, the, the last game was extremely cinematic. It was a really bold Brilliant. overhaul yeah. of the God of War yeah. series. It was really um, in conversation with its own past, which was this, mm-hmm. you know, ultra violent, mm-hmm. arguably quite senseless hack and slasher. Uh, and it basically took the character from those games and was like, what if they re- what if they achieved emotional maturity? Yeah, uh, emotional maturity, the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, or, or, you know, or at least were set on the path to it. And, yes, you know, you, and confronted things. Yeah, and you move, you do move Kratos yeah. along uh, emotionally and narratively mm-hmm. and Atreus too in the first game. Mm-hmm. So all I really want from the second game is more of the same combat, which was yeah. really, really good. Um, exactly the same cinematic approach to the storytelling. The first, the, the, yeah. la- the first, the last God of War game was like all one shot technically. Like the camera mm-hmm. never kind of broke. The cutscenes move. You know, there's 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 no edits and no cuts apart from when you like mm. hop into a menu or something. Um, mm. And it's, it was really, really cool, really immersive, really beautiful. It's interesting Gorgeous that it's coming game, out on the yeah. PS4 and PS5. Um, mm-hmm. I wonder if that is basically to do with the fact that not as many people have PS5 <laughs> yeah, as I, Sony would have wanted. I, I'm sure yeah. they would have liked this to be a, a oh, PS5 exclusive. 100%, 100%. I would have quite, you know, all things being equal, there would be enough PS5s for everyone who wants one. And this would be yeah. a PS5 exclusive because there is part of me that's like, how could this look if it had been developed as a, as a PS5 exclusive? Mm-hmm. But I don't know. But I'm so excited uh it's gonna be great i hope the last game was really really fun really exciting really thoughtful um Mm -hmm. and the boss fights were brilliant oh gosh they were yeah the only thing this one needs is maybe more animations when you pull things in half because it could get a little bit samey yes i think they needed stuff double i think they needed double the amount i think what the ones that were there were great but because it was so fun to get that kind of visceral attack type thing i i ended up seeing the same animations a lot although it is always fun to stamp on the thing's heads so it's always fun to stamp on a on a a a norse demon's head so Mm -hmm. you know swings Mm -hmm. swings and roundabouts Pokemon's new installments, Scarlet and Violet, are here, and they've been given something of an overhaul. Set in the new region of Paldea, the Pokemon Company promises the series' first open-world RPG with three different storylines to follow, and legendary Pokemon that are mounts, bikes, and planes. So Luke, you've played some of this. Yes. There is a video on the channel for yeah. people who want to know even more about it than we're mm. going to talk about here. Yeah, I've played it for an hour. Uh, I, <laughs> I am very much... Uh, in two minds uh, on this game because on the one hand they are doing some finally they are doing some really quite interesting and disruptive stuff with the Pokemon formula Um, the most obvious being that it's now set in a a proper open world or at least that's what they're Mm -hmm. going for when you encounter a wild Pokemon now that you want to catch and you go to battle it it no longer jumps you into a little kind of twee diorama um, those battles now happen like in the open world. You can move the camera around. Um, these things shouldn't feel revolutionary uh, because the Pokemon series has been very, very conservative uh, yeah. in, in its leaps forward and in its developments over its history. But 
uh, you know, the, these are the things that I've been asking for for a long time. And, mm -hmm. you know, now they are finally taking steps towards that. Um, and, and there are a lot of other ways that it kind of messes around with the Pokemon formula that I don't want to get too into because we did do a video on it already and it mm -hmm. will get quite Go nitty gritty. It. We'll pop it up in the cards. Yeah, they haven't really explained how it's going to work if you can kind of go anywhere. Uh, and mm. yet you could, and yet there is still uh, a bunch of different gym battles. I imagine the game will still probably want you to do them in order. Uh, so you might end up with a, a game that's kind of open world, but th there is still one. with some yeah limitations. Yeah, like with with some with some caveats. Uh, yeah, but who, who? This is all mechanical stuff that it, we're not really going to know how it shakes out until we've had like mm -hmm. dozens of hours of, of, of playing with the game. The other thing is, based on what they've shown so far, the presentation is uh, a little rough around the edges, I think it'd be fair to say, even in the even mm -hmm. in the trailers and stuff that they've shown off. Um, you know, the, the frame rate tends to not be very high. The game kind of looks a bit like it's chugging. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, that is also something that I experienced during my time with the game. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not out yet. There was an early build. Um, yeah. It's important to note. Graphics aren't the most important thing. The reason no. that I think this deserves mentioning is because, and we've talked about this before on the channel, that the Pokemon company has immense resources. <laughs> so they are, many resources. They are rich <laughs> as kings. Uh, yeah. You know, Just give Game Freak some more stuff. <laughs> yeah, off of Pokemon plushies and stuff. So, uh, you know, so the fact that, like, basically, the one of the wealthiest uh you know figures in the mm -hmm. in the video game space you know puts out games that don't look on par with you know what what other studios mm. are putting out i do think is you know it, it's not great I, I would like the pokemon mm -hmm. games to look better um and yeah there were there were a few kind of frame rate and and kind of technical issues and stuff which which you really really wouldn't expect from a a, a, a publisher with the resources like the pokemon companies but uh, but there you go. I'm still optimistic. Um, I hope that the mechanical changes and the open world stuff works really well. Yeah, it's just another. It's another. It, yeah, Sonic and it's Pokemon. Another Sonic and Pokemon. <laughs> Whose plush will I be buying next year? Yeah, next, this is November. It all comes will, down to this. Yeah, it all comes down to this. Quick question yeah. before we move on to the next one. What is going to be your starter Pokemon? Oh, great question. Um, uh, Like probably the duck, obviously. Um, yeah, because yeah. it's got the amazing quiff. It's got your hair. It's um, Yeah, it's got a great quiff. Looks like Donald Duck. I like the water starters usually. It looks like it belongs in DuckTales with that hair. Yeah. Yeah. Like Dewey. It's kind Dewey of, yeah. Yeah. on a big night out. <laughs> <laughs> For me, uh, it's obviously Sprigatito. I like the fact that they've given the grass type, I think, the cutest one this mm. time round. At the time of recording, um, we haven't seen the evolutions of those no, starters. No, no. That's so a they big might be factor. Rubbish. Uh, if, but, if, if Quaxi yeah. turns into like a really muscly duck with a six pack <laughs> or something, then, <laughs> then that will seal the deal. <laughs> It's time to choose our own horror adventure again as Supermassive Games return with another Dark Pictures anthology game. The Devil in Me sees a bunch of young documentary makers going into a replica of a real-life killer's hotel. Will you take them along the branching narrative that gets them all out alive? So, another yeah. Dark Pictures game. These are these fun. These are, are fun, yeah. yeah. I like that these exist. I like mm -hmm. it a lot. They usually have like a, a star person in it, mm. like, or two. Yeah. Uh, the big one in this one is Jesse Buckley. Cool. Uh, who a lot of British people will definitely know and some Americans will probably know. She was recently in that horror film just called Men, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, which is on my list to watch because uh, the main guy in it is one of my favourite actors and he's very good. She's in, and, uh, she's his in Chernobyl. His name's gone from my name. But... What's the yeah, thing? she's in Chernobyl. She's thing? amazing. Wild, Wild Rose. She's in a Wild Rose. That's, yes, yeah. yes. Cool movie. So, uh, yeah. there's some, there's gonna, got some good star pa star drawing power over at Supermassive Games. Yeah. Um, and there, there are some differences to this game compared to the others that make it feel a little bit more resy than... Uh, purely than like than I don't know. Life is Strange has some of this stuff, but like, like what? Like what? Um, they, so they add an inventory in it, an inventory. so characters can car be carrying things okay. and have things with them. All right. So I'm guessing like oh, if you don't pick up a thing earlier on and you yeah. get to the thing later, maybe it'll be more like point puzzle, and click right? than like you know yeah. le less like yeah. moving your shotguns and herbs around and more like yeah, did yeah, you yeah, get yeah. the doorknob? Oh, no, then think, you can put yeah. the doorknob on the thing. Yeah, I think it'll be more like that. All right. um, and uh, also there are so there will be uh, tool based puzzles. So mm -hmm. I think we'll rely on that. 
Um, and also you can jump what? and climb. Jump and climb? But th- these yeah. games never really put you in direct well. control of the characters. So how, is, no. how does, how does you can, that work? You can move the characters around a little bit more. So I think oh. they're a little bit more involved than the All previous right. titles. But, but that, that, that's, yeah. that's just what I've read. I've not I've been able to have hands-on with the game or anything just yeah. yet. This is just what has been reported. A Creepy Hotel is a more conventional setting for a horror story yeah. than the previous Dark Pictures games have necessarily mm-hmm. been. Um, so I think that I'm kind of interested in it for that reason alone. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I, what I really want for... I, I really like the the Dark Pictures anthology. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, so I do really like the idea of a, a fairly, you know, genre-wise, straightforward. It's a creepy building. It's like a haunted house. Uh, what's going on in the haunted house? So, you know, I'm I'm I'm, mm-hmm. I'm into it. Yeah. I'm into yeah, it. I'm into the... I'm into the... I'm into the single building setting if that makes sense yeah oh my goodness it actually comes out on uh, mickey mouse's birthday so <laughs> <laughs> the greatest gift ellen you know mickey mouse doesn't have a birthday right yeah. okay okay yeah it's the 18th of november oh cool yeah 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 that's there the, that's the day be... he was that's the day he emerged from his mother's from Walt, womb Walt Disney's right mind. okay that's what we're calling his birthday okay that's cool, that's cool. right we should move on it's the old west but not like you know it head back into an alternate universe american frontier and use guns and gauntlets to fight vampires in the evil west so this one looks really interesting yeah, it's uh, a game that they made it, for andy specifically yeah, yeah. exactly yeah it's 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 andy's dreams come true yeah. it's like van helsing mixed with arthur morgan mm-hmm. Just a very cool design to the whole thing because it's, you know, Old Frontier, Wild Wild West, wiki, wiki, wiki. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and and it's basically, but there's like kind of like steampunky sort of elements to it with regards to like, he's got a Tesla gauntlets and things and you can zap things and the monsters all look kind of, you know, they're vampires, but there's kind of like some eldritch horror looking things that mm. have like leeches coming off of their necks and it's all very... Yeah. It's just like, well, it, bleh, yeah. but in a good way. Weird West, which is an, an underserved mm. genre, I think, because... Um, 100%. You know, yeah, it can be very, very cool. The visual design of this is so striking. It looks really cool. Um, looking at trailers, and neither of us have played this um, prior to release. Mm-mm. Um uh, it looks like it has the kind of combat where it's going to be real important that it actually just feels exactly right in your hand. Mm-hmm. You know, like the the, the the controls are just so on point. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, it's that kind of third person. It's got to be very, very chunky. It's got to be very, very satisfying to be, you know, punching these vampires hard in their squashy heads and exploding them. Am I right in thinking that there's some co-op element to yes, this? Yes, yes, there's co-op. Uh, I believe campaign co-op, if I remember correctly from uh, various trailers and things I've read, uh, which, it, you know, imagine running around with your pal and just, like, blowing yeah. up vampires. That'd be fun. It's published by Focus Home Interactive, right? Mm-hmm. Who, you know, are not a video gaming household name as a publisher. No. But did they they published a Plague Tale? Is that is, yeah? They is did that the right? Plague yeah. Tale now double games, both of them, yep. uh, Innocence and Requiem, and they yeah they've got a good record of bringing out some kind of like fairly solid like kind of double A, you know even there's this like triple A, but not quite triple A, but like yeah. that mid tier mm. where it's just very solid and you have like a nice lovely compact experience, yeah. and you're not worrying too much about how expensive it all looks you're just looking at how fun it looks and how pretty yeah. like it's it's a really good art style and a lot of fun gameplay and that's all that matters yeah. um they've, and they've clearly nailed the aesthetic here haven't they 100%, uh, with evil 100%. west so hopefully mm-hmm. they also nail the gameplay all right luke so th- those are all the games all uh right. that we're excited about but i i have to do an honorable mention because of uh, Outside Xbox and Extra's favourite ginger cat. And I'm sadly not talking about Jonesy from Stray. No. Um, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm talking about Garfield, who is bringing out their own <laughs> Don't uh, say Garfield's Mario bringing party. it out. Garfield <laughs> didn't do it. He's famously well, lazy. He had nothing well, to do with people, it. Some other people He are just puts out his name on it. A Garfield 
Mario Party style game yeah. called Mario Lasagna Party. Garfield Lasagna Party. So sorry. <laughs> That, that would look. That's how much. That would actually be a little be a bit too game. far, even for Garfield, to if it was called Mario Lasagna Party. <laughs> well, look, Sorry, I mean Garfield Lasagna yeah, Party. Yeah. Um, and I thing is, I couldn't include it as like a big thing in this list because because it's going to be rubbish. Because it's well, <laughs> it could be a bit rubbish, and like literally all there is is screenshots, so it sort of screamed to me. Um, that hey we've not finished this game and it's probably going to come out in December we don't, instead or we don't whatever. want you to see this game in motion yeah um, but yeah. Um, the, I, I believe the Game Awards Twitter account has since tweeted out okay, since good. I wrote this good. they tweeted out some sc- more screenshots good well, which include pizza. Look, probably <laughs> don't play Garfield Lasagna Party because it looks like a, a fairly um, unambitious yeah. Mario Party clone. But don't yeah. worry, I'm sure we we'll will be playing play. it on the channel. Because, <laughs> but that's if, because yeah. I haven't seen confirmation that it is online co-op. So we might have to like... Oh, God. I'm going to have to travel. I'm going to yeah. have to travel to play You're gonna Garfield. You're going to have to travel to play Garfield Lasagna Party. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you left it to the end of this video to break me this bad news, Ellen. <laughs> well, let's think of some more positive things. No. Luke, what, what game are you Garfield. most excited for? Garfield. This? No, please. <laughs> no, I, the one I'm most excited for is Garfield. And I won't change no. my answer. <laughs> okay, well, no, I'm fine. Pokemon, for... Pokemon. Please be All good. Right. God of War Ragnarok for me. Yeah. All right. Um. Uh, it looks amazing. Uh, I I I want to hit things with a big axe. Yep. All right. Check back for our daily Garfield lasagna party streams, um, <laughs> and a channel takeover. Uh, and if there are any other games other than these f- seven and Garfield lasagna party uh, that are coming out in November that we missed, drop them in the comments so that you can help your fellow. <laughs> internet travellers who are just trying to find something to play that isn't these seven games or Garfield lasagna party. <laughs> and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. A million likes yes. equals one lasagna party playthrough. Uh, no, 24 hour stream. <laughs> 24 hour stream. Of lasagna party. Okay, well. <laughs> For a million likes. Yeah. I don't feel very confident in saying. <laughs> Yeah, I'm confident in saying that. Yeah, if this gets a million likes, yeah, 24-hour lasagna party mm-hmm. live stream, please mm-hmm. don't hold us to that or make this a campaign where you get a million likes because <laughs> I, I don't want to do it.